Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Lark Davis here on Twitter. So, Bitcoin just going to range between 30,000 and 60,000 all year long. Even the heavy hitters in the space are uh, realizing that this trending range here for Bitcoin is uh, very, very unusual for the length of time that we're seeing it happen. Now, this is Bitcoin on the daily. And uh, as I've mentioned before, Bitcoin has been ranging and um, it's it's not so much 60,000. Uh, we did see that all time high of 69,000. So I would say 30,000 to about $70,000 per BTC. Um, that range has been happening for over a year now. And, uh, you know, I've talked about it on this channel, an accumulation trend that we're seeing for Bitcoin likely. I mean, I cannot guarantee that that's what we're seeing, but um, it's looking like it's accumulation before that last pop to the upside. We're also seeing it in the alt space, right? Because we're seeing uh, altcoins generally move uh, in the same way that Bitcoin is moving. So Bitcoin up in the last 24 hours, about 4.8%. Uh, Ethereum is up about 5.9%. Uh, and we're seeing all other altcoins that uh, generally up roughly the same amount. So Solana up 5.39. Uh, Terra is up 9.2. XRP is up 4.36. Uh, take a look at Dogecoin though. A bit of an outlier, 29.7%. And I have a feeling it has to do with the Elon Musk buying Twitter news that, uh, you know, retail traders in the crypto space thought to themselves, maybe I should buy some Dogecoin because Elon, Doge, you know, it's all going to work out. But other than that, we haven't really seen too much uh, movement for altcoins, at least not compared to Bitcoin. So um, what this dictates is that the market is still trending along with Bitcoin. And, um, you know, we're not really seeing anything too remarkable. XRP right now trading at just shy of 68 cents. So XRP did, uh, we did see a bit of a dip yesterday here. Let me throw it on the hourly real quick. We did see that dip yesterday, that scary, scary dip came down to roughly 64 and a half cents, uh, then went back up to uh, just about 70 and a half cents. And now it's back at 68 roughly. You can see here that inverted head and shoulders pattern. If you pay attention right in there, you can see a little one in there. So XRP did dip, um, but ultimately it is trading alongside uh, the trend of the market. Uh, and you can see up here, the market is up a little bit. So up slightly to 1.86. Um, but Bitcoin dominance, this is the big thing that we have to be paying attention to 41.3. So if we just go to dominance for a second here, this is Bitcoin dominance uh, plotted on the chart. Um, you can see historically what we have seen is Bitcoin dominance plummet here. If I just pull this out here and shrink this down a little bit. You guys can see over the last altcoin rally, we did see dominance really plunge. That's when money came out of Bitcoin and into alternative cryptocurrencies. Um, and then we had the bear market. And so we haven't really seen that same thing. We did see it last year in April, 2021, when all those altcoins started gaining steam. But since then we found support in and around here. So this was May, 2021. We found it again in September, 2021. And then again, uh, January, 2022. But we really haven't seen much more of a move to the downside uh, for the Bitcoin dominance, which means investments in Bitcoin and altcoins is still at that equilibrium. Confidence is relatively strong in both Bitcoin and altcoins. So not too much of a move there. It's going to be when we see that dominance fall, when altcoins really shoot up. Just bringing up Bitcoin again, Bitcoin to USD. I'm of the opinion, and I did a video on this a few weeks weeks ago that we could have already experienced the bear market and maybe we did not even know it. If you guys want to catch up on that theory, I'll link that video up here in the top right hand corner. Moving along though, with regards to Ripple enabled company news, Mirabot selects Temenos and Wealth Dynamics for wealth management services. So just scrolling down here, the banking and financial services provider Mirabod announced today that it has launched a digital transformation program and selected six listed Temenos and Wealth Dynamics for its bespoke wealth management services. So they are going to be providing wealth management services for the Mirabod company as part of its digital transformation program. The company aims to develop a digital end-to-end -end wealth management platform to facilitate customers. Temenos highlighted the growing use of digital tools in the wealth management industry. According to Temenos, its banking cloud provides an opportunity for Mirabod to meet the evolving demands for its clients. Now, for those of you guys who do not know, six years ago, this happened in about, uh, I think it was 2016, Temenos' T24 core banking solution integrated with Ripple technology. This was before many of us were even in the crypto space. I know I did not join until 2017. Nevertheless, this is what was happening behind the scenes back in 2016. So Temenos responsible for the uh, IT and backend integration for many of the big banks. And they have been a Ripple partner since 2012. Well, now we're seeing them on board more clients through their banking cloud solutions. And uh, notice they're saying here, wealth 
wealth management services. The traditional way to buy and sell stocks, for example, is slowly becoming obsolete. And we are coming into a new age of digital technology. And this is really going to influence the financial system and how these big companies now do business uh, using DLT technology, just as one example. So Temenos stating it right here, according to Temenos, its banking cloud provides an opportunity for Mirabot to meet the evolving demands of its clients. So there are going to be more uh, asset classes, cryptocurrency obviously going to be one of them. So in order to provide the best services for their clients, they're going to have to integrate to get on that new system. Additionally, Mirabot is planning to utilize the broad range of wealth banking capabilities of Temenos, including payments, financial crime mitigation, and data lake. So some great updates, new products to onboard clients there. I also saw this, guys. This is from PRNewsWire.com. Neom signs definitive agreement to acquire alternative payments network platform SoCash. So Neom, also a Ripple partner, the global platform for modern money movement today, announced a definitive agreement to acquire SoCash, a Singapore-based alternative payment network platform. SoCash brings together financial institutions and digital commerce merchants into a thriving network that allows customers to withdraw, deposit, and make payments with cash from more more than 30,000 local shops, cafes, and grocery stores. So we're also seeing Ripple-enabled Neom partnering up with new companies to provide more payment options in their local regions. In this case, it sounds like it's happening in Singapore for more than 30,000 shops, cafes, stores. We know payments have changed since the pandemic, and so that is now being reflected through these Ripple-enabled companies, either buying up or partnering with other companies uh, to merge the technology so that it is a streamlined, cashless payment experience. The acquisition provides Neom with the team and technology to enable multiple forms of local payment acceptance for digital commerce, especially in emerging markets. Cash is still a preferred method of payment across Asia Pacific and Latin American markets, however, and the acquisition of SoCash allows Neom to accept cash for transactions online, also bridging the physical and digital worlds together. So that's interesting too, you know, in these regions where they're still using a lot of cash, they have to, um, I guess, incentivize them to start going uh, cashless. And so, you know, if you can lure them in with cash, cash payments accepted, sure, we'll show you how the technology works. And then maybe for the next payment, you'll decide to pay with your mobile wallet or, um, you know, something similar. Again, part of this strategy is helping to bank the unbanked. So people who are used to paying with cash, getting them off of cash and giving them a new solution. Together, Neom and SoCash become a full stack platform of choice for global merchants with capabilities of local acceptance, multi-currency accounts, foreign exchange, and global payouts. So all very interesting news, of course, Neom uh, partnering up with lots of different companies over the last several years. Neom, again, a Ripple-enabled company, along with Novati. So we got lots of Ripple partner news today. Wrath of Kahneman brought this to our attention. Novati is a Ripple partner, and they are to issue stable coins. Wrath of Kahneman here is quoting Peter Cook, the CEO and managing director of Novati Group. He says, we see lots of uses in remittances in settling transactions for cross-border payments, such as for exporters and importers for purchases of cryptocurrencies. So Novati will become an issuer of stable coins. This was from uh, an interview that he did with, um, I'm not sure who this uh, interviewer, oh, it's Melissa. Dharma one. So she's interviewing Peter Cook from Novati. And uh, so Peter Cook goes into the interview by saying, uh, so the sector's going through massive changes with the beer flu. Uh, we've seen an acceleration of the conversation of cash payments to cash lists. So like I was mentioning earlier, and whether we're tapping and going or paying online, sending money across borders, we're getting these increased numbers of transactions that are digital. And Novati is exposed to more and more of those transactions as we build our business. In a real innovation sense at the moment, we're looking at a number of blockchain services and we're exposing ourselves with technologies to be able to facilitate further blockchain and digital transactions where we continue to sit in the space of B2B infrastructure. So I think that uh, consumers and businesses need to be able to access all of these payment types. And really what we want to do is enable our business to simply pay and be paid faster, better, quicker, cheaper, and to access all of these new tools. So exactly what RippleNet and XRP were designed to do, faster, better, quicker, cheaper, all that fun stuff. Melissa Darmawan then asks, on that note, can you dive in a little bit more as to how Novati is actually going to do that? And Peter Cook says, so if I talk about stable coins, a stable coin is a digital asset that is backed by traditional fiat currency. Um, so he gives an example there. We see lots of uses in remittances and settling of transactions for cross-border payments, uh, such as for exporters and importers, for onboarding and offboarding, for purchases of cryptocurrencies and use cases that are yet to be seen. So Novati will become an issuer of stable coins. We're working on a significant strategy where we will have what's called a multi-chain stable coin solution. And 
in part that may be deployed as stablecoin as a service uh, for other fintechs and banks. And otherwise we will deploy stablecoin services directly to our customers. So it looks as though they want to get into the stablecoin game specifically private stablecoin versus um, I guess a central bank issued stablecoin. Since they are partnered with Ripple, who knows if it will run on the XRPL or not. Nevertheless, thought I'd bring that to your attention. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. And this one guys from Matthew L-I-N-Y, another Ripple partner, Cross River Bank, just reported on them the other day actually, and Sardine on crypto payment infrastructure. So here's some more news. Cross River Bank teams up with Sardine to provide a crypto payment infrastructure for their clients. Financial services organization Cross River Bank has formed a partnership with compliance platform Sardine to ensure Sardine's customers have a reliable way to access funds through Cross River Bank's infrastructure platform. Sardine's a weird name for a company, don't you think? As a crypto first financial institution, supporting the crypto industry is not only core to Cross River's mission, but it's also our responsibility. This is a quote coming from Cross River head of digital assets, Luca Cosentino. Uh, that's what he said on Monday, which was just yesterday. Sardine is working on one of the most important problems in the payments and crypto world, as we are proud to serve with them as our API driven payments infrastructure, the base layer of the fastest growing fintech and crypto companies. So you notice a lot of these companies now are uh, getting into fraud prevention and compliance infrastructures. This is what I'm noticing, uh, the latest trend here from these uh, companies that are Ripple enabled or that are partnering with Ripple enabled companies. Uh, fraud prevention, compliance infrastructure for digital wallets and neobanks uh, through a platform developed by veterans of Coinbase, Revolut, Google Pay, Bolt, and PayPal. Uh, here's a quote, Sardine is uniquely suited to provide instant ACH transfers based on its core technology, which uses AI to provide a real-time fraud score based on the user's identity, device and behavior patterns at the time of account origination and account funding, uh, the company said. It also continuously monitors for fraud during account login, deposits and withdrawals. Customers simply integrate Sardine's SDK into their web or mobile apps and Sardine handles the rest. So Cross River Bank now, Ripple enabled, is teaming up with Sardine, which is uh, looking like they are on the fraud prevention and compliance side of things. So that's some interesting news. Wanted to thank uh, Matthew L-I-N-Y for posting that. And did you hear guys, amidst all the hoopla of Elon Musk buying Twitter, he also did this, this from Michael at Val 5 links, Elon Musk along with Mark Cuban, they're calling for the SEC's gag order reviews against settling defendants as Ripple lawsuit eyes a settlement. So could this have wider implications for the cryptocurrency market? And not only that, extend out to broader markets that the SEC has jurisdiction over. Is there charade or charade or however you want to pronounce it unfolding before our eyes? And is this going to have an effect on the Ripple lawsuit? Well, the petitioners say that the SEC's gag orders are only a plot to conceal information from market participants. And this is what we've been seeing in the past. Here, let me read you guys a little bit of this and see if I can explain it better. Elon Musk and Mark Cuban have joined an amici curious brief challenging the SEC's gag orders, which prevent settling defendants from publicly condemning the SEC's unproven allegations. So considering so many of these SEC lawsuits uh, settle, 99% of them, or I mean, whatever the percentage is, it's a large majority. They do not want defendants to talk. If once they settle and Mark Cuban and Elon Musk are fighting against this, the brief written by petitioner Barry Romerill is supported by people such as Musk, Mark Cuban, and Nelson Obis, among others, demand that the Supreme Court of the United States review the SEC's unconstitutional gag rules. Notably, the individual amici have at some point litigated against the SEC commission. Uh, and then there are some comments down here. To give you guys more of an explanation, or rather, maybe I should talk about this first, the fact that Brad Garlinghouse tweeted this out a few days ago over the past couple of years, I found myself becoming far more familiar with the SEC than I ever thought possible. Well, Brad, have you been following the Ripple lawsuit on Twitter? The amount of information that is being uncovered by uh, some of our very own Twitter sleuths here in the XRP community is just remarkable. Uh, he goes on to say, which is why it's beyond ironic that one of their goals is to provide disclosure. Guess they don't need to abide by their own rules. Let me also remind you guys that uh, it's not just these fellas who have a problem with the SEC. Grayscale is also calling out the SEC's inconsistent actions for not approving their spot Bitcoin ETF. So there's a lot going on behind closed doors. Many different facets of the crypto industry are getting really, really impatient now, it sounds as though, with uh, the SEC. Uh, this from XRP Crypto Wolf. Asset manager Grayscale has made a new appeal to the SEC to upgrade its Grayscale Bitcoin Trust 
into an exchange traded fund uh, in a letter dated uh, back on uh, April 18th. Grayscale's legal counsel, Davis Polk and Wardwell, noted that the SEC's recent approval of the so-called Tecrium Bitcoin Futures Fund provides a basis on which it should approve Grayscale's own spot base ETF product. And here's a quote, we believe the Tucrium or Tecrium Tucrium order confirms the fundamental point made in our November 29th, 2021 letter in support of the above reference proposal. When it comes to approving ETPs, there is no basis for treating spot Bitcoin products differently from Bitcoin future products. So just another point here, a point of contention, bone of contention, I suppose, against the SEC. Brad Garlinghouse is knowing it. Now Elon Musk and Mark Cuban, they're the ones spearheading this initiative. Mark Cuban tweeted this out just yesterday. The SEC wants to use cases they win as precedent. Now, listen to this for a second, okay? Where's the logic here? What about the cases they lose? Can we not use that as precedent as well? They want them silenced. And so this is why, even though it wouldn't necessarily relate to XRP specifically, the Ripple XRP case is going to be huge for the crypto industry. And if they can get this uh, precedent overturned, um, you know, if the SEC now has to allow all the settled cases to be known, to be public, well, that is going to have a huge impact on the crypto space. Whatever happens with the Ripple case, which is we're assuming it's going to settle at some point, that is going to have a big impact on the cryptocurrency market. And so shouldn't that verdict, shouldn't that settlement be disclosed? Well, this is what Mark Cuban and Elon Musk are lobbying for. They want them silenced. This changes precedent and prevents investors from learning from them. Why, Gary Gensler? I thought you were bringing fairness and justice to the SEC. You can change this. Now, here is a little video from the new Civil Liberties Alliance explaining a little further what the SEC is trying to do. Guys, listen to this. Justice is blind, and everyone should have a fair chance to defend themselves. But when a government agency brings charges against you in its own internal court, innocent people don't stand a chance, and their reputations are forever destroyed. At the Securities and Exchange Commission, 98% of cases settle because ordinary Americans cannot afford to fight the powerful agency. And the moment defendants settle, they are silenced for life. The SEC has been coercing defendants for five decades with a gag rule that forbids defendants from speaking the truth at risk of re-prosecution. But that is not how justice works. The gag rule prohibits truthful speech and infringes the public's right to hear criticism of these agencies. As a people, we should never tolerate the injustice of the government silencing defendants. Does anything offend the First Amendment more than government censorship of speech? Sign our petition today. So there you have it, the new Civil Liberties Alliance coming out and saying, SEC, no. If you guys settle, you still have to disclose the settlement terms because that should have an effect on future cases moving forward. You should not be able to prosecute only on the cases that you win, only on the precedent from the cases that you win alone. Even the cases that you lose should set a precedent, especially now when we are seeing a new asset class being regulated before our eyes. And so if you guys want to read the full uh, brief here, uh, I have linked it. It is uh, linked directly to the new Civil Liberties Alliance website. Uh, and so I'll put this link in the description of the video for you guys if you want to read further. So this push, I didn't think that Mark Cuban and Elon Musk were going to spearhead something like this, but this push for the SEC to open it up, if they get this passed, this is going to change everything. Sure, we'll already have the Ripple XRP verdict, but this is going to have an everlasting impact on the rest of the cryptocurrency market. And for the better, considering Ripple and XRP have a strong case, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.